I just think it's a negotiating ploy by Khalil Mack. I, I think the reports are Gruden has reached out. He just hasn't gotten a response back from Khalil Mack. Uh, I, I just think Khalil Mack is playing hardball. Uh, and, and so right now, I'm just going to call it a standard uh, negotiating standoff. I, I'm not going to read more into it that there is some kind of uh, unrecoverable uh, disconnect between Gruden and Khalil Mack. There's also a report, though, they're miles apart. Miles apart. So I don't want to put it all on Khalil Mack. He's the best player defensively. He and Vaughn Miller, Aaron Donald, are the three best defensive players maybe in the league. Doesn't it seem weird if you took over a company Two months in, I hadn't talked to my best employee. I mean, that's, wouldn't you like Uber to his house, knock on doors? Yeah. Something. I mean, something? No, yeah, he should be showing up at his doorstep. You know, not just a text and, hey, how you doing? Uh, can we talk? Some no, no. When can we talk? You fly out there. You, you come and see him. And this, this just shows the fact that a lot of things have been said about John Gruden over the years with him and players and some players not being able to trust him. Uh, he's the best hype man, best hype coach that ever came through the NFL, ever. He can get the whole team hyped up and riled and on the same page for his own benefit. But if you don't reach out to the best defensive player in the National Football League, there's a problem. And I know you're an offensive coach. You're more worried about Derek Carr. You're more worried about the wide receivers in the offensive front. But Khalil Mack is a once-in-a-lifetime player. You, better, you, gotta, you gotta fix that. And if you don't fix that, that shows me what kind of coach and what kind of person you are. Because he has enough power. He signed that big deal so he can make some things happen. And if they're that far apart, you should be the one that's saying, we can't make it happen right now. We can't structure something, but we want you here. And if he hasn't done that yet, that's a problem. Yeah, that's, that's my problem. And that's what I'm going with. I, I don't know what has transpired as far as communications between John Gruden and Khalil Mack. But I don't need you to come to my doorstep. I don't expect him to go to the extreme, but at least let it be known that I have reached out to Khalil Mack. I have let him know how important he is to this team. He has a C on his chest for a reason. Forget the, the potential of NFL Defensive Player of the Year candidate. Like, he is your captain, a team captain, a leader on that team, on that defense, and the reports are there's been no relationship. There's been no communication. That's just a bad look as a head coach coming in with this buzz from the fans, the media, the expectations, all of that, and you haven't communicated to your best player. I have a problem with that. Communication's a two-way street now, though. It is. It is. But I, I, my expect I guarantee Derek Carr didn't have to reach out. By the way, listen, two of their first three picks were offensive players. They really needed defensive help. So, you know, it, it might, I don't think it's cryptic. I mean, Reggie McKenzie wanted to help the defense. Gruden's like, no, I want offense. You're kind of sending a message. The defense is second class. You got to hold a Derek Carr. Let's be clear, though, here. John Gruden, in his original stint with the Raiders, built a Super Bowl contending team. As soon as he, they went to the Super Bowl after he left, he goes to Tampa Bay and with a great defense and Brad Johnson at quarterback, he won a Super Bowl. He's been successful everywhere he's been. Some of the hype about him has been the golden touch he seems to have. It's not all just coming out of his mouth, and he is full of bluster and says some things to hype himself, there's no question. But he has produced results, and he has produced great results with defensive players. I can't, I don't think he's got amnesia. I think he knows you got to have the Derrick Brooks, the Warren Saps, the John Lynches to have success. I think he, he's got to know he needs Khalil Mack. Well, of course you need it. There's 32 teams in the league that needs Khalil Mack. The problem is that you have to go beyond, beyond what you would do as a head coach. You have the power. They, they, you, you're going to be here for a long time. You can make things happen. You can find a way to get in front of Khalil Mack or Khalil Mack get in front of you, how, however that works. If you haven't even made communication to me, it sounds like, okay, we're going to go out the offense side of the ball. I'm going to make myself and his offense look good, and whatever happens on the defense side of the ball happens. That's how I'm looking at it. If you don't reach out to me or find a way, I, I just don't see Khalil Mack playing hardball with the head coach, maybe with the organization, but not playing hardball with John Gruden. My memory is that... They tried to go basically all offense for a couple of years with Derek Carr, and the defense kept letting them down. I can't, I can't believe Gruden is this stupid 
that he's watched the Raiders with Derek Carr score points and not be able to... It's, to... I don't think it's stupid. I think his brand is offense. And if John fails, he doesn't want to also crush his brand. John wants to build the... By the way, Pete Carroll, at both USC and Seattle, the offensive line's gone into the tank. Why? Because Pete's brand is defense. He's always going to take care of the defense so it looks good for his brand. See, I, I, I buy that because when you're offensive or defensive-minded coach, head coach at that, you tend to, and you know this, you can speak to this, you tend to stay on one side of the ball and make sure that your side of the ball isn't the reason why we're not successful. Thank you. That's, that's important to offensive and defensive-minded coaches. I, I saw it with Dick Vermeil when he basically got run out of St. Louis for Mike Martz. He came over to Kansas City, and he built an offense because he wanted to prove he could do it with Mike Martz. I just don't see this with John Gruden because as much as he's known for offense, his brand is really about winning. Yes, I agree. It's, 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 it's winning. That, that's... That's what I remember about him in his two previous stints. I, I think not great offense. Your memory is fuzzy. His last six years in Tampa, three of the six losing seasons, the two of the winning seasons were nine and seven. It wasn't a great division. He left, had alienated a lot of people. He'd never developed the next great quarterback, and he had a losing record. That's the reality of it. He took Tony Dungy's blueprint and roster, took the momentum, played a team that well. he knew their plays. I think his brand is bigger than reality. You believe Jameis can still be the face of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Yeah, I, he was getting better every year. Completion percentage, passer rating, he's talented, but there's been damage done. You know, teams won't announce it, but you got area scouts, regional scouts, GMs, owners. They sit down, and he's not in the room. And there are doubters now. There are guys going, okay, Florida State, Tampa Bay, there's, when they say who's all in and there's 12 guys, eight hands up, maybe nine. But damage has been done. His brand right now, right now this second today, unfortunately, is it's kind of amateur. It's not, boy, he's really this. He, and it's too bad because if you go look at the stuff that matters to me, he's getting better. Dirt Cutter can coach. I liked it. But I think he's losing. I think he's lost some people in the building. Yeah, I, I don't think his reputation is kind of immature. I think it is. He is immature. Uh, however, I, I love the way he handled himself yeah. today. I watched the entire exchange, and I thought he was incredible. In turn, he went well beyond my expectations. I thought there was some real humility, some real self-awareness. I thought he handled every question brilliantly. I, I, the questions I'll have, second to last game, when he... Uh, basically attacked a referee, and they had to try to drag him off the field after he fumbled the ball and kind of cost him an opportunity to win a game. That kind of on-field immaturity, is that going to stop? Uh, I, I do think we probably, hopefully, pray to God, have heard the last thing about him off the field getting into trouble, but I still see some things on the field the eating the W or whatever before the game and all this, <laughs> where Jameis still has some growing up to do, and hopefully we see that. Yeah, but at the same time, you look at when they ask him the question, this is your last chance, and he really couldn't answer that. The, the answer is, yeah, it's your last chance. Uh, he's just he's not acting like a franchise quarterback right now. He's not acting like the guy who they plan on spending the next five or ten years with. As soon as he understands that, that's when he's going to grow up. The problem is, for me, I think it's going to be too late. Uh, he just keep making these immature decisions, right? You look at it and some of the stuff he was doing, I was like, man, I remember when I did that, but I was in high school. You know, I, would, you know, I remember jumping on the table and screaming crazy. Yeah, I was like a sophomore in high school. You don't think a guy that's in his position, someone you're looking to build a team in the future around, is going out doing the things. We've heard him apologize before. We heard the same thing. I won't do that. I won't do that. But it just doesn't make sense because he's shooting himself in the foot over and over and over again. When he's going to stop? And I think it just it, it might be to the point where it's too late, where he's not your guy going forward, no matter what happens. Yeah, you guys made all valid points. Um, you look at him, and he's made some not wise choices since Florida State days. And looking at him now, this happened two years ago after his rookie year. Has he grown as a person? I think he has. He's done a lot for the community. He stayed out of trouble for the most part. You look at this, by no means should he have done what he done. I feel horrible for the, the lady that was involved, but... He's done some great things. He's been well. He's played well when he's on the field, when he's not doing the antics, eating the W and things of that nature. I think 
this is his last chance. He couldn't answer that, but I think this is his last chance. But he's done some things. I think he can be the face of the organization if he continues to play well and do the right things off the field. You know, one of the advantages he has is scarcity of quarterbacks. I mean, the NFL just had eight running backs drafted. GMs are saying it's the best running back. You don't get eight quarterbacks a year. So the bottom line is if you... <laughs> If you're in the same division of Matt Ryan, Cam Newton, and Drew Brees, it's easy for us to say, we got to move on. Right. You better have a plan or you're going to go 2-14. and 14. The question for Jameis is, will guys follow him? He, yeah. he wants to be a leader. Will guys follow him? And, and so he, this happened in 2016. He's tried to move past it off the field. But again, I go back to on the field and the, the bouts of immaturity we see on the field and things that just go, is that really what I want my leader to do? And so today, we just showed the clip of Jameis's response. His teammates all had to answer a bunch of Jameis questions, and that's how you lose, guys. Oh, I, I got to sit here and answer questions about Jameis and his off-the-field deal. That's when it becomes hard to follow a guy. But this did happen two years ago. So now it came out to light. So now they have to answer it. So I believe those guys are backing him 100%. He's a, you know, well liked. I know Gerald McCoy there played with him at Oklahoma. Well liked guy on that team. But these interviews about Jameis Winston's off the field antics will have to stop. And I believe they will.